And we'll welcome everyone. We are absolutely delighted to have you with us this evening here at the People's Church, Newton Abbey, for our evening gospel outreach together. God bless you for tuning in tonight. May God richly bless you at the minute as you turn to him again with your heart uh, on Father's Day. And this is Father's Day and it's a time to celebrate. It's a time to thank God and it's a time to think about faithful fathers. It's wonderful the impact that faithful fathers can have on society on the family unit, and even on the world itself. And also we're remembering tonight, today the faithfulness of God the Father. That's something to rejoice over. That's something to behold. And that's something to remember as well. So God bless you for tuning in. And if you need the Lord tonight in a real, real way, he's there for you. He has something for you. I believe he has something for it to say to us tonight from his word. And we're going to read from his word in just a minute. You know, we had a wonderful time here in the sanctuary this morning as we came and worshipped with our families on Father's Day. Heard a wonderful, heartfelt, real life story from Jason this morning. Wonderful story of how God can change a life, of how God can bring a change and the impact that has on so, so many people. That's something that we're celebrating as well. And it's so good to be blessed by the goodness of the Lord. May you receive that tonight. May you be blessed again tonight as you tune in. The Lord wants to speak to us. The Lord wants something from us as well. And the little portion I'm going to read to you just now from the book of Proverbs chapter 23 highlights that God has something to give us, but he wants something from us. And we must remember that. You can't forget that, nor can I. And we're going to read these couple of verses together tonight. I've just called this little message, the Father's Plea. The Father's plea. There's a plea here. God pleads something here. And, and it's remarkable when you think of it and, and consider it that God is pleading here. And let's read from Proverbs chapter 23 and verse number 22. And we're going to pray in a moment, but I want to read these few verses and I pray that you'll keep just a focus tonight on what God is saying here. And here's what Proverbs 23, and remember in the book of Proverbs, God speaks through wisdom. God communicates in the name of wisdom. And here's what it says in verse 23 and verse 22. Listen to your father who begot you. That's what God says. Listen to your father who begot you. And do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice, it says. And he who begets a wise child will delight in him. Let your father and your mother be glad. And let her who bore you rejoice. And then in verse 26, this is what it says. My son, give me your heart. That's what God says in this verse. My son, give me your heart. And let your eyes observe my ways. That's what the Lord has led down. We're going to pray about it. We're going to pray the Lord will help us receive it and help us fully understand what the Lord means here by these particular words. Can we pray to that end just now for a moment? Can we bow our heads just for a moment? Father, we need you tonight. Thank you, first of all, we can call you, Father. Thank you that you've bidden us and requested us and desired us to call you father our father who art in heaven 
Lord, that's what we can have tonight with you. Thank you for that blessing. Thank you for that honor. Thank you for all that that means. And now will you bless your word unto our hearts. And in us, Lord, will you be glorified. And in us, may you reign even tonight. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for receiving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, the message I want to try and just get across to you very simply tonight centers on one pivotal thought, one pivotal idea, and it's about giving God our hearts. It's about giving God our hearts. It's very, very simple in one sense. It's about giving God our hearts. And yet that is so profound. And yet there's such a challenge in that. And such a meaning in that. And such an understanding in that. Giving God our hearts. You see, here's the reality. There may be some people who are willing to give God their souls for all sorts of reasons. Maybe because they don't want to die and go to hell. Maybe because they don't want to face eternal judgment. And so they're willing to give God their soul. But the reality also is tonight, God requests us to give him our hearts. In our reading, the last verse of it, God says, My son, my daughter, give me your heart. We've all heard the saying, her heart wasn't in it, or his heart just wasn't in it. It speaks of something to do with passion, commitment, and desire. They may be inclined to an idea, but the truth was their heart wasn't in it. They haven't given their heart to the thing. Do you know God in his word really requests us? He pleads with us. The heavenly father pleads with us here in his word. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. God wants every one of us to give our hearts to him. If there is a difference between a person's heart and a person's soul. Jesus said one day, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your soul and with all your mind. He seemed to draw a, a distinction between those elements. He seemed to do that. A person's heart is different to their mind. And both are different to their soul. And Jesus says, you've got to love the Lord your God with all of those things. But he started by saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. With all your heart. And I hope you can see the point here. Some may try to trust God with their soul for all sorts of reasons, for all sorts of agendas, but maybe they haven't given him their heart. You know, God doesn't let us away with that. And God won't let us away with that. He wants our heart. My son, he said, my daughter, he said, give me your heart. Give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. By the way, in Proverbs chapter 23, God is speaking as a father. Got to remember that in the short passage that we have read from Proverbs chapter 23, God is speaking as a father and he's very clear in his appeal. My son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. He wants our heart. By the way, every true father wants that too. Every good and faithful father wants that as well from their children. You can buy a father all sorts of gifts today. You can go out of your way to really impress them materially. But you know a true faithful father at the end of the day, they want something from their children that comes from their heart. Every true father wants to feel a strong desire in their heart for him. That's what matters the most. 
That's what counts the most. And God is the same as well. He's not just interested in saving our souls. He wants us to give him our hearts. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. He wants a place in our heart. He wants the, a place in our hearts. He wants us to feel for him. He wants us to long for him. I hope you can understand this tonight because this is what the Christian life and experience is all about. It's all about a relationship, but it's a heartfelt relationship. He wants us to want him. And if there are times when we are not connecting with him, he wants us to miss him. Have you ever liked that? Maybe you haven't really connected with God in a, a couple of days and <clears throat> you've been maybe saying prayers and, and gone through emotions, but not from the heart. Do you ever miss him? Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and miss him and long for him and pang for him? King David knew what that meant. He, he, he said one day in such a poetic way and, 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 a, and, a, and an incredibly creative way in, in his literature and in his writings, he says, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul after you, O God. And it came from his heart. It came from his heart. God wants us to have that relationship. And yes, the salvation of our soul is settled and it's secured and it will mean everything for all eternity. But salvation doesn't end there. It's a relationship in our heart. And on this Father's Day, we have to remember that every true father wants that from their children. He doesn't just want the children to send something to them. He wants to be with the children. My son, my daughter, God says, give me your heart. You know, we might well ask, well, why should a person give God their heart? And all sorts of questions are being asked today of the Christian truth claims that are, have not never been asked before. But in some ways that's good because it really gets to the source of the meaning of God's word. And someone might ask, why should a person give God their heart? their heart. You know on the first premise why anyone should give God their heart? Let me tell you why they should. No matter who they are, rich or poor, famous or infamous, doesn't matter. On the first premise why anyone should give God their heart is for this reason, because God has already given his heart for them. God has already given his heart for you. How deep the Father's love for us. That's what we're remembering on this Father's Day. I've been singing that for the last few days in my heart. I've been letting that just really encapsulate me and, and, and compel me and, and engulf me. How deep the Father's love for us, so vast beyond all measure, that God would give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. God has already given his heart to us. When we read the Bible, it's just filled with declaration and illustrations of how God has shown the fact that his heart is set on men and women and young people like you and I. And he wants our heart today because the heart is the seat of the affection. The heart is what matters. We've all heard the term. Her heart wasn't in it. His heart wasn't in it. Even in a marriage, you know, they got married, but their heart wasn't in it. God won't let us away with that. Our heart has to be in this. He won't even just let us come for salvation of the soul. Here's his word tonight. Give me your heart. We should give the Lord our heart because he has given his heart to us. But we ought to give the Lord our heart for another reason. It's because what he will do with our heart when we give it to him. <coughs> excuse me, you know, God is going to do something when we give him our heart. God is going to do something with our heart when we give it to him. And the first thing he's going to do is this. He's going to cleanse it. God is going to cleanse our heart when we give it to him. And that needs to happen, by the way. That needs to take place. You know, Keith Green wrote, 
a lovely song. What can be done for this old heart like mine? Soften it up with oil and wine. God cleanses our heart when we give it to him. He will cleanse our heart when we give it to him. That's why you need to give God your heart tonight. Because of what he'll do with it, he'll cleanse it. You know, David said in one of his famous Psalms, Create in me a clean heart, O God. It's not powerful. It's not something David knew he needed his heart cleansed. And he cried out in Psalm 51 by way of repentance when he came to God. And here's what he said. Create in me a clean heart, O God. God will cleanse our heart when we give it to him. There may be a possibility tonight that some could even be listening and you've given the Lord your soul by way of salvation, but not your heart. He doesn't own it. He doesn't have it. Listen, he wants your heart. He's pleading for your heart. See in the passage that we have read from Proverbs, it's the Father's plea. It's our Heavenly Father's plea. He's pleading for our hearts. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. You've got to give your heart to him. You've got to give your all to him because of what he'll do with it. Yes, he's already given his heart to us, but he'll do something with that heart. He'll cleanse it. The second thing he'll do with our heart is this. He'll fill it. He'll fill it. The second thing God will do with our heart, he'll fill it. Now, here's the truth. No one can fill the heart like Jesus. No one can fill our heart like Jesus. It doesn't matter if it's family, pleasure, ambition, career, whatever. Nothing can fill. No one can fill our heart like Jesus. It'll all leave you short and empty sometimes. No matter what it is, family, pleasure, ambition, it'll all disappoint you at times. But Jesus will never do that. The Lord is the only one who can make us whole. And make us satisfied. We need to give the Lord our heart because he's going to fill it. If you feel a sense of emptiness within, give him your heart tonight. You might be even a church goer and you've never given your heart to him. You incline to the principles of Christianity. You can see the moral aspect. You can see the benefit or, or, or the, 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 the benefit that the Christian way and the Christian life can bring on society. But you've never really given him your heart. He will not let you away with that. He challenges you tonight. He challenges me tonight. Give me your heart. And do it today. Do it on Father's Day because the Father is pleading. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. Not just your soul, but your heart. Your heart has to be in it. Give him your heart today. He'll fill it. He'll fill it forever. Can I tell you something else as we come to a conclusion? The Lord will establish our hearts when we give them to him. When we give our hearts to him, he will establish them. I want to tell you that's my testimony. I was all over the show. I was unstable as water. I couldn't hold down a relationship. I couldn't hold down a steady job. There was a self-destruct button in me that no matter how everything was going right, I would just destroy it. I at times would go to my way to destroy it. I couldn't describe it. It was like a self-destruct button and I just seemed to gravitate towards that. Everything destroyed relationships, stability, every good thing in my life. I just went, seemed to go to my way to destroy it. That was my life until the day and the hour when I give my heart to God and he done something with my heart. He established it. Listen to what King David said. Not my testimony. Listen to King David's testimony in Psalm 40. He gives his testimony in Psalm 40. And here's what he says. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the Mary clay. See that word, Mary clay? It just means a place of no standing. You can't get stability. You're always sinking. You're always slipping. You're always losing footing. There's no stability. Ability. He took me out of a horrible pit, out of the merry clay. Listen to this now. And set my feet on a rock and establish my steps. That's what God does with people. He establishes their heart. 
He brings stability within that changes their entire life. Is there someone listening tonight and you need to hear that? Because you know your life is the opposite to that. You need the Lord and you need to give him your heart tonight. There's more than just praying a prayer for your eternal salvation. You've got to give him your heart. You've got to make room for him in your heart. In this age of chaos and uncertainty and instability, there's nothing like being established by God. A great Christian singer called Don Francisco once wrote a song that was called, I'll give your heart a home. I'll give your heart a home. That's what God says. That's what the gospel says. God says, my son, my daughter, give me your heart. And overarching in that is the wonderful promise, I'll give your heart a home. God will do something with our hearts when we give them to him. You know, we see empty people all of the time. We deal with empty people all of the time, young and old alike. It doesn't matter. People in as wonderful careers, and yet they're empty. And as pastors, they open up to us. As pastors, many times they are honest with us. Some are trying to fill themselves with the wrong things and it's killing them. Some are trying to fill the emptiness with the wrong stuff and it's destroying them. The one who created us, the one who calls us tonight says, My son, my daughter, give me your heart. I want to fill it. I want to pour myself into it. I want to establish it. <clears throat> King David said in regards to his experience of God again, and we've been quoting David a lot tonight, but his, like Jason's story, David in the Bible is a real life story. Psalm 23 and verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. That just means God fills me up. God fills my life. God fills my heart. He wants to establish your heart. Some people's hearts are unstable. They are all over the place. They feel they're going under sometimes. That's the Mary clay. It's like sinking sand. David says God took me out of that. And God can take you out of it tonight, but you've got to come to him with all of your heart. He's not asking you to be perfect. He's not asking you to be clean. He'll clean you when you give him your heart. That's the message of the gospel tonight. And David said, he set my, my feet on a rock and established my steps. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. That's the plea of the father on Father's Day. That's the plea of our heavenly father tonight. Give me your your heart. Remember, he's already given his heart to us. He has every right to demand our heart onto him. Even the songwriter penned the words, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. That's what God is pleading with every one of us tonight on Father's Day. On Father's Day, have you given him your heart yet? Is your heart in this relationship? See, if it's not, then come to him with all of your heart. See, if it's not, put it right tonight. You may have wondered. You may have gotten away from God even. We call it in Northern Ireland a backslider. But he hasn't got your heart tonight. You know, he's waiting for you to return. He's waiting for you to come home. He is the faithful father in the story of the prodigal. He's longing and waiting for the prodigal to return. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. The plea of the Father tonight. Will you heed it? Will you respond to it as we end this Father's Day? By the way, thank God tonight for faithful fathers. Thank God for the impute they can have on the family unit, on society. It's the same with faithful mothers. We mark that on Mother's Day. And we also say pray for mothers because Mothers are under attack. Well, faithful fathers are under attack as well because of their influence, because of what they can do. Pray for fathers tonight. Pray for them with all of your heart, Christian.
But listen, thank God for our Heavenly Father. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure. If you haven't given the Lord your heart yet, why don't you do it right now? Why don't you do it tonight on Father's Day? Is there a better time to do it? Is there a better occasion to do it than now? Because the Father is pleading with you. My son, give me your heart. My daughter, give me your heart. But you respond. We're going to pray a prayer maybe to help you. And it could help you if it comes from your heart. These words we're going to pray. They come from your heart. They can change you tonight. For the word of the Lord says, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Some people say, well, just call the name of the Lord, I'll be saved. No, there's something in the call. Their heart is in the call. And if you put your heart in it tonight, it can change you forever because God can change you tonight. We're going to pray. Will you pray these words after me from your heart to help you? Lord, I come to you with all of my heart I've heard your word I've heard your plea and you're pleading with me I give you my life tonight and I give you my soul but I also give you my heart I need you I want you and I ask you to receive me Will you cleanse me? Will you fill me? Will you change me? Will you stabilize me? And will you fill me with yourself? Fill my heart tonight. Even change my old desires. Give me new ones that are after your own heart. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Hear my plea. Because I mean it with all of my heart. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for loving me. I give you my life tonight. I give you my soul. And I give you my heart. From this night and forevermore. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this evening. It's not wonderful to have the Lord in our lives. God bless you tonight. We're looking forward to the call to prayer tomorrow night. Send in your prayer requests as soon as you can. We're going to be praying to, with all of our hearts tomorrow night. Our heart is going to be in it tomorrow night as we come before the Lord. And then back in the sanctuary on Wednesday night again for the Bible study. Remember that come out. The Lord has been blessing Wednesday nights in a real, real way. And we'll look forward to seeing you. But if you need us, we're here. Our heart is set on you. Honestly, brothers and sisters, our heart is set on you. And if you need us, let us know. God has given us that love in our heart for the people of God, from the people's church. And if you need us at the minute, let us know. We're, there's a pastor in the office every day and we don't want you to be alone. If you need us, let us know. We want to pray with you. We want to listen to you. We want to encourage you. We want to talk to you. So we're here for you. God bless you. And God bless what we're doing. It's been blessed throughout all that we've been doing. And God sees our heart tonight. It's set on him. We're listening to him. We're waiting on him. He has been directing us and we're praying every day he'll continue to direct us. And please note that, brothers and sisters, we are earnestly every day asking the Lord every day to direct us, make the right decisions. Sometimes they're not the easy decisions, but we believe that they are the right decisions for this particular time. And God has been doing us. And we're looking to him with all of our heart. We want to say that to you tonight. And God has been leading us. But more than that, he has been blessing. And we pray that will continue on and on and on. And God bless you tonight. We'll see you soon. Take care. God bless. Mm -hmm.